later. All righty then. Okay, me. All right. Hi everyone, I'm Ashley Monique, owner of Ashley's Yummy Tummy. Um, as always, make sure you like my business page on Facebook, Ashley's Yummy Tummy Catering on Facebook. Um, you can go to my website and order sauces, Ashley's Yummy Tummy dot com. Uh, you can go to so make sure you subscribe to my YouTube page because uh, if you don't catch these videos live on Facebook, they will be uploaded on my YouTube page. Um, also. What other pages you can like? Oh, my Instagram. Go to my Instagram. Um, Ashley, uh, Ashley Monique843, Instagram. And then also follow these guys, Courtney on Facebook, Kista on Facebook. And then Courtney. on Instagram, my name is Full Court, F U L L C O R T. Absolutely. And um, like I said, and also the description of everything where everybody located at will also be on the YouTube, like under the description. Everything is listed there. All right, so this is the last episode for 2020. We made it to episode six. Let's give ourselves a round of applause. This is just the idea that keep on going. It's like the Energizer Bunny battery. But all right, so let's get into this. Um, oh, oh my little timer. I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to keep it. It don't ever work, but go I ahead. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Because at the end, I'd be like, damn, I was 35. What the what? But okay, so let's get straight into this. All right. So we're going to discuss the first topic we're discussing tonight. We're going to try to get around to four topics, then we're going to try to wrap it all up without end of the year 2020. That's the goals for tonight. Let's try to hit them. All right. So the first question we have here is if your partner is watching porn, do you consider that cheating? Why and why not? Who would like to take this first? Okay. And does, it, and, does, and does it matter like the category? Like, is, is there one particular category where you was like, now he's watching Christian porn and I, you know, Lord bless his heart, you know, but if he's watching big booty holes, <laughs> you know, uh-uh, no, he, he needs, I need to be involved with that. So, is there like different porn categories or is it like, no, if you watching porn period, no, I'm gonna slap him outside his head. <laughs> no, I don't think porn is, watching porn without me is cheating. I don't know why people think it is. I had a situation at my old job in Marion when I was still living there. Mm -hmm. This guy, like he was going through it with his wife because his, his wife really considered watching porn was cheating. Like, she considered him like actually cheap. like it just that's just so crazy to me it just doesn't make sense you watching people have sex that's like watching people kiss down the street you know what I mean is that are they cheating because they're watching them kiss like it just doesn't correlate to me mm -hmm. well I mean what, what what was the age category that they were in they like, were older they were older they were it, like I want to say 40s 50s okay I mean well I think with that situation, I think it's more, um, she's older, so she might be more like insecure, not insecure. Well, I don't want to, I most definitely I don't think jealous, but it's just that maybe he's watching younger women, you know? And so she may not be as willing to do certain things anymore. And so if he's, a, I, it's tricky because she could probably be looking at it like, if he watching that, then he's probably on his way out the door to probably go cheat or something like that. But then again, she could kind of look at it like, well, if I allow him to do that, you know, then that'll keep his ass here in the house and he won't go cheat, you know? So it's kind of like, ugh, you know? Yes, I mean, you can look at it both ways. I just don't see how you could consider that cheating. It just doesn't make sense to me because it's not like he's, you know, I mean, like, even like in real life, like people have their celebrity crushes, you know what I mean? Like, what's it called my ex he loved that girl before she started acting stupid about um what she did what did she do what's her profession stacy dash stacy dash oh god how in the hell he attracted to her he but this was like before that that little incident with her happened but he was like in love with stacy dash like he was like uh, that's my boo that's my bae da, 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 da. and you, you, you don't ever take like offense to it because it's like one she's a celebrity two like 
if it ever came up, I mean, I would hope he wouldn't cheat on me, but if he's going to cheat on me, he's going to do that regardless whether he's watching porn or not. But like with celebrity crushes, like you, of course, like at some point, like I would assume that people fantasize about it if they are that intense about it. So, mm-hmm. but it's not real. You know what I mean? Right. So I, I just don't understand how people correlate with that, with actual cheating. But like the lady I'm talking about, like she was putting him out, like he had to sleep in his truck, like Oh, hold up. Now that's different. Because if, if she having to do all that, like have him get outside the home, then that sounds like he maybe had a fetish or like a sex addict. Um, no, that's the thing. Like he would sit there and talk to <laughs> he would sit there and talk to me and everyone else there. Oh, like it, it was really like, bothering him. Cause like it, he she really thought it was like a big giant issue. Like that's it, the, was it, it got to be then. It's it. He, you know how men always downplay shit anyway. So he's probably making the scene like I just, but well, okay. You but think talking- about for her to put him out the house though, think about it. Like I need to talk to her. Let's, I let's, mean, let's- she she was crazy to begin with. I can tell you some other stories. But I think that's okay. Going okay. But either way, even let's say that he wasn't downplaying it. Let's say that he okay. was being sincere about like you know watching porn like any other person does. Like. It's still like I wouldn't even make it an argument. Like if I walked in to my man watching porn without me, I'd be like, "What category is it?" <laughs> like yeah, I mean, at first, yeah, you do it like jokingly at first, but then <sighs> that's what I'm thinking. Because when you you just said something, let's rewind. You just said watching porn like any regular person, right? For my knowledge, I thought people mostly watch porn when don't don't nobody nobody's around you know what i'm saying like that's, that's more of a, a, more like a private thing you know so for that's his wife to like i don't know it, that's just it's giving me vibes of like he was doing it too much and if he was doing it too much and that's already already issues in that marriage already that means she's not sexually satisfying him so that's probably why she was like super upset like i'm already uh slapping on your knob like what you what you what you looking at that for you know so i, I mean but you can say that about anybody even if he wasn't doing all that and she caught him watching porn she would still consider that cheating so like okay let's say you're in a healthy relationship y'all have a healthy sex life all that good stuff like that you right. catch a man watching porn do you automatically assume that you're doing something wrong because yes yes i would be like why are you first off i would say are you okay like am i not enough like what's going on because i know because the guys that i've been talking to they said that healthy they said three to four times a week now does that is that is that number okay with y'all three to four times a week yeah okay so now if we're doing that three to four times a week and i'm catching you with porn watching porn three to four times a week that's seven to eight times that's six to eight times a week so i would go to him and say do I need to increase the number? Like, are you sure three to four times I do it need to be six to eight times? Okay, so let me let me ask you something. Okay. So you're out with your man and a girl who doesn't look anything like you walks by and you catch him staring. So then are you going to question is he even attracted to you anymore? Uh, Automatically, no. That's why I said, that's why I didn't say I catch him one time. That's why I say I catch him an additional three to four times. Now, if we go out, okay, let's say he, she walks by. I'm like, because I saw her too. I'm, I'm a realistic woman. I'm like, okay, yeah, she's fat ass. Okay, you know. Um, But if I'm starting to see it more often, I'm going to be like, but if one do, fat do I need a Planet okay, Fitness okay. membership or something? Like, what, what, what's going on? Like, I thought Well, was- if one fat ass catches his eye, another fat ass is going to catch his eye. As much as, you know, society would like to make it seem like it's not a common thing, a lot of, especially Black women, have fat asses. So, like, if you don't have a fat ass and someone chooses it. to be with you, even though you know that they like fat asses, then do you question yourself all the time? This is, okay, great. Right. This is when you question yourself. When, let's use me for an example. Let's say that all the guys that I've dealt with are attracted to plus size women, right? But using your example of we're out and about, and then I see a girl that's like y'all size, right? That's slim, slim thick, you know? So I would question that. And then on top of that, so at first I wouldn't say anything because he's a man, he's a human being, he got eyes, we see it, okay? But then when I start seeing a reoccurrence and then I go to the porn history and I'm like, 
slim thick brown bitches. What the fuck? We got to come on. Who does like a slim thick brown bitch? <laughs> but I'm just saying, if he say he's attracted to me, my size, I'm a big, I'm a SSBBW. I'm a, I'm considered a super size. I just taught y'all something. SSBBW. I'm a super size BBW. Okay. So if he tell me that's all he likes, it gets him hard. He can't help it. I'm a little teddy bear. He loves me. But if he start looking at women like y'all and I'm like, I thought you said. And then I start to see porn categories of that as y'all describing how y'all look. And I don't no longer see my size girls on the uh, porn, like on his laptop, or on his phone or whatever, you know. Yeah, I'm gonna start feeling some type of I'm be like, do I need a Planet Fitness membership? Well, I'm, I see what you're saying. <laughs> there it goes. I see, I see what you're saying. Like, if he specifically said that this is what, this like is what I'm type. only attracted to. But let's okay. say, because I mean, not every guy is only attracted to one type of girl. So okay. let's say that you're with someone who's not attracted to just one type of girl. You're just the type of girl that he's into at the moment right now. So y'all got okay. together, you know, whatever. Okay. So if he looks at other, like, if he looks at other girls that don't look like you, even though, he, you know, it's clear that he doesn't just like one type of girl, you're going to be insecure about that? No, 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 no. But if he makes it specific that it's my type that he likes, then yeah, I, I would question it. But no. I mean, you got to use some type of common sense here. So that's why I'm like, with your coworker situation, I'm like, hmm, I wonder if they talked about her. Was well, she just like the type of woman where she was like, you need to cut that out. That's nasty. The Lord wouldn't like that. You know, right. like. I, I, don't, I don't know the specifics of the arguments. I just right. know that it was a big deal for her. But I mean, there was a lot of other stuff. I'm not going to put his business out there. But I don't think we're Facebook friends anymore, but I'm not going to put his business out there. But there was a whole bunch that's of other right. stuff. Um, but I'm just saying like specifically when we're talking about porn and our significant others watching them, I just don't, don't consider it cheating. I don't consider it cheating. I don't see it. What problem. about you, Keisha? Okay, so um I don't consider it I don't consider it cheating. Okay. But um when YouTube was like kind of talking or whatever, um there are Oh, I like your nails. About. Ooh. So, thank thank you. you. And um there are actually females out there who are insecure, for mm -hmm. one, why they don't like them watching porn. For two, they got to remember if it is a fetish, if it is an addiction, if it is, it doesn't mean they're going out there looking for something. It just means this is just something they're addicted to and just don't know how to break it. They just need to go to a, a PAA and stuff like that. And I mean, but I don't, I, I'm not sure why. But it, there are guys who are only physically and they only really want a, a BBW, but they will research this certain look when it comes to porn. Why? I don't know. But there are dudes out there that's like that. But that's just like a female who's like, I won't date outside my race, mm -hmm. but as soon as um, Hoblo come on the TV, with a with a six pack and he looks this way and look that way and stuff. That's like, oh, he you know, oh, he looks good, but okay. won't, but won't date him. Okay, so, now, like I, I'll say this about me, like I won't date outside my race, but the guys who do turn me on to be like, oh, okay, is the guys that the sons, not the owners, but the sons of the guys that be owning the gas stations, whatever race that ethnicity that is, Arabic or whatever, the gas station sons, like they be fine. Like they be like, I don't know if they they ain't mixed with African American or Black American whatsoever, but they be fine. Ugh. See, so I just so want to take, I just you want got to your preference. See, you got your preference that you want, but you see something that's fine. Yeah. So it doesn't mean that he doesn't want you. So you should never question any. Nobody should never question themselves when it comes to the other person watching porn because you want what you want, but you also see what catches your eye too. So but, there's a difference in that. I mean, I get what you're saying, but realistically, if whatever their names be, usually start with a Q or a K, if he tried to holler at me, I really would try to talk to him, even though I don't, you know, date outside my race, you know, but anyway.
Lord. Okay. Um, let, right let me quick, ask you a question. Me, based, huh? Go ahead. I was going to say right quick. Um, you got Brittany that says no because we watching it together. Um, okay, Brittany. <laughs> okay, but but that's the thing though. But pause. But what if he? That's I think the problem is where this question comes from is when the man or woman, but we're going to talk about men, that the man is watching it by himself. He's not incorporating his woman. Like she's accidentally stumbling upon him watching this porn. If I still don't person, see a problem. You still don't see a problem with it. Okay, so let me so let me ask you this. If we're if y'all say healthy sex is four times a week for with your, your mate, your partner, what would you consider unhealthy with walking in on him or either checking his computer, his laptop, and seeing that he's watching porn? So what would be an unhealthy number for you? Now factor in the fact he already had sex with you four times this week. Now, how many times would you be like, okay, we need to talk about this? It doesn't matter what category. Well, you start to see, because Kisa said something about an addiction. So Kisa, like... Right, I would say if it's an addiction, maybe. But I feel like if, if porn is an addiction, like, it's interfering with all aspects of life. So if you are, like, making it a point to, like, stop spending time with me because you want to watch porn, I feel like that's an addiction. You know what I mean? Oh, so you're saying... You're saying to my question is actually it don't matter how many times it just matters if he's withdrawn from his normal activities, just normal life period. Like if you, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be like when he's watching it. If he's with or not even with me, if he's at work and he's thinking about, you know, can I, you know, go on the dark web and look at some porn real fast, you know, or something like that. That's a problem. That's a problem. Like if you can't, you know what I mean? Like if you can't, if that's always in the back of your mind that you want to watch porn, I would say that's more like an addiction. Like, you know, being addicted to drugs and stuff like that, always trying to get your next fix. But I mean, if I if we're let's say we're only having sex four times a week, and I see that he watched, you know, porn about, or maybe I caught him watching porn about six or seven times out that week, maybe twice on one day, it's not that big of an issue for me. Okay actually not an issue at all i don't really care <laughs> right see i feel i feel like it only becomes a problem like i said if it starts interfering with everyday life or interfering with our relationship or anything so if i catch you watching it nine out of ten if a female is catching him watching it it's either he's sneaking it because he don't want nobody to fuss he's either sneaking it because he um somebody just made the comment which is could be true too they said um who was that nina said he might be getting some new ideas which is some people do that and then um it it could be so it all like it all depends I, me personally i don't see the need for a female to fuss about a guy watching porn unless you know it kind of michelle say it's wrong but <laughs> but other than that i don't see the need for her to fuss about that because it's not like he's going to this other female and he's watching it with her or he's doing this and doing that with her. Not, it's, it's like he's not bringing another person into your relationship or into the life of it. He's just watching something he likes to watch. He's watching something he loves to watch. There are people that watch porn just to watch porn. Yeah. Like there is, there is no motive. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You do. You there is no motive behind it. Porn. So like, <laughs> let me tell you something. I was trying not to get too personal. I was trying to handle some business. You know what I'm saying? And I get distracted. I told you I get distracted with porn. Porn. I go up there for one thing, and then I'm like, I don't like. I don't really care for amateur porn because I prefer the professional porn. You know, even though it's corny, but I prefer because they, they, you hear the sounds, you can see the angles. I like the up under shit. I'm like, okay, okay, deep stroke. You know, like I like all that stuff. I hate amateur porn because I get distracted because they don't be cleaning their rooms. They got like a raggedy bed. Like, no, all amateur porn has like, uh, the ones I be seeing one. And I need to get out the hood then because I be watching hood amateur porn. You want to read some more of the comments before? Yeah. All right. Hold on. Let me see. My phone just did something. Could you take over right quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And so uh, Cordelia said, hey. hey. Hello. 
Um, Sugar Knox said, Ashley Monique, your look be giving me life, gal. Don't she have a jasmine, like a princess jasmine type of thing going on tonight? Thank you. Thank I swear. You. Um, she also said, I don't think it's cheating. Shit, bust them nuts. <laughs> <laughs> we need her. Look, we're gonna have to have her call in because she's hilarious. <laughs> and then Cody said, someone I know just said to me the other day that she didn't like when she had someone who would watch it whether she was there or not, because she felt like he should only be thinking about her. But I feel like as long as he's not gonna go hunt the porn stars down, then we gonna, oh, then we can watch what we want. Oh, she's saying she feels, okay. So Cody feels like as long as he's not gonna go hunt down the porn stars uh, down, then uh, we grown, we can watch what we want. Okay. And then, uh, Oh, you already read Nina's. Yeah, don't forget about Cordelia, the gas station. Oh, so. the gas station. So I should be laughing emoji about that. What happened? Hi, Misha. You said uh, the gas station. Yeah, she yeah, was you like the gas, gas station. station. So. Oh, oh yeah, they be fine. Oh yeah. Dark you know, you get the gas station, son, but you know who hits out outside of my race who hit on me the most? Let me guess. Um, outside of your race, uh, talk about like when, where you at now or here, in, like when you was in Marion. You can say period. This is everywhere. I always get hit on by these type of dudes. Other than black. Other than black. And I don't get hit on by black people most of the time. I'm going to say, I guess white. I, I mean, white people? Caucasian? White guys, but specifically older white guys. Like white guys who could be my daddy. And it always makes me feel some type of way because I'm like, I'm not finna fulfill your fantasy of, you know. <laughs> you know. See, I be nervous about that because I'm 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 for a sugar daddy, but I be nervous about the type that you just said about older white men because I be so nervous, especially in this like Trump era or that I'd be like, Lord, they is not it about is, to it is. It's like they're not about to trick that. me by saying, Oh, I'm gonna buy you a food truck, and I'm like, okay, and then they get me over there and then I'm tired to fuck up and can't, you know, like can't move or something. Then y'all think I'm in his sleep or something when I've been kidnapped by the old white guy that promised me a food truck. So I be wanting That's what to, I'm scared. Yeah, I know, like, listen, I'm so nervous right now. Like, honestly, you know how like when you're walking out of store and you know how like the pedestrians have the right away so you got traffic coming this way traffic coming this way and then we walk this way when i see caucasian people coming and then i stop and they be like they do this right here through their windshield they be like i'm like uh-uh you ain't about to accidentally run me the fuck over nope you go ahead nope mm -mm. they scare me but anyway um do we got any other comments so we can move on to the next question Oh, they just had guesses nina was like white guys which is true just the older ones that be trying to fill out their little fantasies from when and them the ones that be wanting you to own um, that that be asking talking about can i call you the n-word uh no you can right exactly that's why i'm like i'm no and then uh damien just made laughing emojis nina she also says sugar daddies and then she put this emoji <laughs> want one but so listen, uh 2021 listen, though topic though what sugar daddy about when no when they ask you can they call you the n-word Okay. Well, when I go back and I'll write, I'll jot it down. All right. So second question, second topic is if black women have daddy issues, <clears throat> do black men have mommy issues? Meaning, unfortunately, a good bit of us grew up without a father, uh, except for Courtney. And uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You know, um, so, okay, so a lot of men be saying, oh, well, you got daddy issues. Like, I guess, because I did mention maybe like in the first and second episode, I did say my first fuck nigga, a fuck boy would have been my sperm donor or my biological father or whatever, um, based off of him not being involved and, you know, all this other stuff. So, um, so a lot of people, a lot of men think that us having, daddy issues affect the fact of us finding good men right so if that's the case then what about boys that have mommy issues 
when you sent this question, I was wondering, I need like a situation of where we're talking about like, what, what, what would you consider a mommy issue? Okay, so it can go different ways. Like um, one, one thing in particular, which I think is more common than any is a mama's boy. Meaning like um, his mom, because he, was, he grew up in a single family home, you know, uh, his mom, a single parent home. And so she just, especially a, a only child, and he was a boy, and he's an only child, like, he's like super spoiled, you know, um, but you kind of would think that those would be the type of men that would be good to women, you know, but nine times out of or eight out of 10, those are the kind that take advantage of women, because they're so used to give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, you know, um, I'm, I'm sleeping at your house. I ain't got to pay no bills. Uh, I'm eating up all your food. I ain't got to contribute. Um, let me borrow your car. Uh, my mom always used to let me borrow her car. I ain't got to put no gas in it. Like I work whenever I want to. I'm a temp agency type of nigga. Like they're just like, I feel like being, you have more of the raised in a single mom home and they're just spoiled as fuck. Like they don't have no drive, no ambition. They don't have no man, manly qualities about them. Like they don't, they're not hardworking. The most hard work they probably did was like play basketball or football. And their moms usually, especially black mothers, and I can say this because I'm a black woman, you know, they, you got to play football. Like they feel like that's the only way out the making them rich or something like you got to play football. You got to play basketball. Like there's more sports than that. Like it's not necessarily just there's sports, tennis, though. there's volleyball, there's baseball, you know, there's chess. Baseball players make bank. But we don't, I mean, they don't, you know. But it's not just sports though. There are mm-hmm. other ways out. It's oh, of course. Sports. Academically, there's other ways out. But most but but you don't see many moms like with their like single moms be like okay let's get this education like let's let's sit down because I'm willing to get my child a tutor like if I have to if I have to if I got to get on take on a second job like we're not just gonna bank on this typical sports stuff but Mm -hmm. back to the question um that's what I mean like that's just an example of having like mommy issues like a mom like spoiling him growing up and now it's time for him to start dating women like ourselves i'm 35 34 27 28 and like you get him and you like so you not gonna work like you don't have no drive no ambition and then when y'all get in an argument what he first thing he do he going to his mama house because she keep opening the door letting him back up in there like no she should be like no you got a woman stay there work that shit out be grown like be a man so that's what I mean by like mommy issues well that that's not really just the only issue though oh we can Uh, go I mean you can you can go yeah like what like what I when I say that is because like I absolutely agree with you say because it's like they say how they say a a female would date her dad but they they also say a, a man would date his mom so not just the fact of being spoiled the only child she isn't raising him how to treat a female because you can spoil them, but at the same time, you need to let them know, son, you, you're, this woman's not going to be your mother. So right. you're going to have to step up. And that's where a lot of them lack it. But then you have also have this other side where a mother is supposed to be raising her son and she's doing everything in the sun over here and then want to try to tell the son right way to do over here but now the son is like, mama can't tell me nothing because look what you're doing. Look look who you are. Look who I, how you are. So a son will begin to treat a female how he see his mama act. Like, a lot of the time, they do tell you to pay attention how a man treats his mama. They, t- they do tell you that, which is a good factor. It's a good, important factor because you have those guys that if they are treating their mother correct, they are treating their daughter correct. Or whatever the case may be, they're gonna respect you as well. But then there are some cases that that ain't the case. If you ain't family, they not trying to treat you that well. Right. But at the same time, the question is, how like how is this mother showing him how to be a man? Even though I know you can't. Yeah. They say a woman. Yeah. They, they, yep. yep. they say a woman can't show a boy I'm how glad to be you a man. Yourself, but, yep. <laughs> but but I have to kind of disagree on the level of no, I might not can't teach you how to use it. 
No, I might not can't teach you what to do with it, but I can guarantee you, I can show you how a woman is supposed to be treated. Right. So you don't just be going out here trying to be a harlot. Because I'm going to let you know now, you bring Susan over here today and you want to bring Becky tomorrow. I'm telling let, you. Let the phone ring. Susan on the phone. I mean, that's just what I'm doing because I didn't, I didn't raise, raise you, you right. to be that kind of person. So you supposed to treat a woman how you want your mama to be treated. But that's where like a lot of issues come from though. Like the mama, the mama be acting and doing one thing, but be saying another. You trying to tell you trying to tell them to do over here on this hand, but everybody know you could tell a child all day, not just boys. You could tell a child all day, don't do what I do. But how you think we grow up to learn? I heard that before. Who you think we watching. I heard that before. Um I think well, long you say don't don't do as I do or do better. Or no, don't do as I do, do what I say do. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 that right there. Yeah. Where your thoughts, Courtney? <laughs> it's hard for me to have thoughts about this because I just, I'm. So you I'm never to experienced a guy. Huh? You've never had like a guy or knew a guy like like with the the first topic like of course you didn't experience that where you had a person in your life that had a sexual fetish or whatever with the porn so you don't know nobody that has like men or cousins or something where you like they might be had like a mommy issue like being spoiled or or either maybe their mom was super hard on them because of you know his father walking out so now he's like angry aggressive or you know I think. I guess if you want to consider this a mommy issue, I guess I can think of one person. They don't know how to mm, be emotional. I don't know if those are the right words I'm trying to say, but they don't know how to express emotions or be emotional or show any vulnerability and no aspect whatsoever because their mom was so hard on them about um and this might be from her own trauma from however her and her you know his dad split or whatever but she was so hard like uh men don't cry you know what you crying for you know you, you're supposed to be a man you're supposed to be a boy you ain't supposed to be crying you know duh, 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 duh. or like um you know just stuff like that that's and traumatizing so, it is traumatizing and so um they didn't they didn't know i don't even think they really understood how to express their emotions without blowing up because uh, they was keeping it inside they, they was, was keeping it inside it. but from my understanding from the conversation that we had that was his mom's way to deal with anything was to blow up and so him his mom telling him to keep his emotions like in check all the time like you ain't supposed to cry like you know why you acting like that hurt your feelings you that ain't supposed to hurt your feelings you a man you ain't that's not supposed to affect you you know stuff like that like but whenever she had an issue she would blow up so he would try to keep his issue you know his emotions in check all the time didn't know how to be emotional emotionally available maybe that's what i'm Mm -hmm. trying to say um and so whenever he did get to his breaking point he would just explode Mm -hmm. so yeah if if you want to I think that's maybe a mommy issue but that's like a whole like a whole line of things because you know the mom's going off based off of she raised him based off of her own trauma about you know right. what was going on I'm not sure the whole story with what was going on with him her and his dad I don't know what that issue was but you know she was going based off of that and so she was probably bitter and you know well my son ain't never gonna be like you did you know stuff like right, that right right so yeah, but she was making him worse exactly exactly she was making him worse but i'm but you what you saying that ashley that's like off that video you saw me make what i tell you about you that society and women our uh, moms raising this raising the guys oh you're not a man if you cry right. oh you're not this suck it up yeah, yeah, yeah. do this so they call it caused them to want to process stuff internally and then because they want to process stuff internally they now start neglecting the other people that's trying to be there because they don't know how to balance the two because now they're going to feel like they're less than a man if the person see an emotion come from them, which is not true. I always tell the little boy I be having, when he cries because he got hurt 
because he failed mm-hmm. because you know a cut or something like that right and they be like they be like boy boy you a boy and i'm like and I look at him. And them to that's what they it. tell him but i look at him i said if it hurts cry that's what i tell him if it hurts cry and i tell uh guys now some guys that i know that have that kind of um it's that issue i'm like i don't care if you have to go in a corner by yourself you get in that corner and you cry because crying isn't a, a wimping thing jesus himself cried had to bring michelle in just a little bit jesus himself cried <laughs> so, if, um, <laughs> so if that man that man that do all what he can do if he cried what makes another man even better that he can't cry right i think i think we need to get out of that um because i know growing up being southern and being black um one of the things that i uh, that was told to me and that i've been heard told which is um what you what you, what you crying for i'm gonna give you something to cry about and then that mm-hmm. makes you be like no nothing <laughs> and then just, you just and then you just go stomping off you be like what you stomping for i'm gonna give you something to stomp for what you slamming my dough for? I'm getting something slamming dough for. Like you just always getting threatened in a black household. Like you just can't do shit. Can't do nothing. All right. Let me tell you something. We 2021. We going into generational curses. That's one of the topics that we're going into. Um, I know some people may be like, "What is that?" Uh, uh, you know, no, that shit is real. I mean, you you try to break it, but like with me, if I do have kids, the way it's looking, ain't gonna happen. But uh, if I do, um. I ain't doing all that how I was raised. I'm not I'm not doing all that. I'm not threatening you. Like you said, if it hurt, go ahead and cry. Let it out. You know, if you need a moment, go ahead and do it. No. But um right. hello, you have uh Marie said, um, yes, there are guys that has mommy issues. I know a few guys. Um, and then Cordelia said, Oh, she got the right saying, um, do as I say, not as I do. Right, right. But, um, but y'all right, it doesn't usually go like that. So I mean it goes either way. There was this <clears throat> this uh Facebook meme thing where it was like there was two sons and they grew up in the same household. They saw that their parents were like drug addicts and alcoholics and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. One went off to do the same thing that the mom and dad did, became an alcoholic, became a drug addict, and the other one, like, became, you know, successful, never touched drugs, never, you know, drunk alcohol, nothing like that. It can go either way. Right. So. Right. Well, um, I, as far as my, my experience, like, uh, maybe dealing with a guy with mommy issues, because I know it's real, especially the single parent homes. It, it's very real. And both of y'all touched on different topics. Um, The one where Courtney was saying about the mom being bitter. Oh, God, that's a lot. Like, especially, like, if she had her heart set on, oh, we're going to be together forever. And then it just don't work out. And that's, you know, it's just, especially if they look like they daddy. Oh, my God. She's really upset, you know. Um. But I had a guy, I dated a guy, one of my exes, um, he, he had real bad mommy issues. Like she spoiled the hell out of him. Like to the fact that where I'm like, I'm surprised you like, I can't say that. It's just, it was just, it was just disgusting. Like, I'm just like, stop calling me. Like, like it was to the fact where he would call his mom when we had issues and stuff. And she would come calling me like, hey, you guys, hey, come on. You know, I'm That's like, so weird. stop doing that, ma'am. Like, your son is damn near 40. Stop. Let him grow up. Like, please. Like, you know, I just, I just, but, um, but I think it was based off the fact that, you know, him growing up, but, uh, he, 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 He grew up um, seeing his biological father, you know, um, physically abuse his mom, you know, um, so he's real, like, sensitive, like, real caring, real thoughtful, real, you know, um, which I told him that's amazing. I applaud him for that because it could have went the other way. It could have went opposite mm-hmm. where he is abusing women himself because he, he grew up in a household with that. And then I asked him, I said, um, like, like, honestly, I said, you can be honest with me, like, 
do you hate your mom? Like, do you, do you feel some type of resentment from your mom? Because when he talk about that stuff, like, he gets upset. And I was like, and he was like, I never really thought about it like that. He was like, I mean, I mean, because he was making excuses for her. He was like, I mean, she could have left, but I kind of get why she did end it up. It fucked him up. Like, now their relationship is, like, kind of weird, but I just hate, like, that spoiling stuff. Like, we can't even, if I say, I don't, I'm on a diet. I don't want carbs. You know, he'll be like, mom, she's not eating the cornbread. Hey, Ashley, do you think you can take a bite of the cornbread? You know, just for, I'm like, I can't deal with that. I'm sorry. Okay. I, that, I have that, a question. That sounds, like the, that sounds like it went in a manner of they're protecting each other now still. It's like they're still protected. Like, is the dad around? No, no, he being left her. He been like, okay, so it sounds like they're still protecting each other from something that something that happened then, because the mom is is like the mom is has always been trying to be there for him and been right there to keep him from being that type of man, but then he's confused because he's like, should I should I be like my dad? But I shouldn't be like my dad. No, I'm not gonna be like my dad. But, yeah, he, he, he tried to here. hard not to be like him. That's one thing. Right. And and then he's like, I got to be here with my mama. I Like, this is mama. Mama been through too much. I can't break her heart. Right, right, I can't right. put her back through more pain. So it sounds like they're just protecting each other still, even at his age of now. So they actually both would have to, they both would have to get help and healing. Oh, I said that. Are, you know, Before I'm an advocate for um, therapy. Be an actual man about anything. Listen, any woman that is with that guy, y'all in y'all triangle, our tricycle, good luck because his mommy is mommy's never going anywhere. Like, I have a question. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so, for spoiled females who have been spoiled all their lives, do you still like? Would you consider that a daddy issue? Oh, how like just being able to get anything they want like all, they, all it takes I is mean, a phone call listen okay that's, that's an issue yeah it's an issue like with men because um it and it, it depends on the kind of man that you end up with or, or as you're dating because some men you will have some men like what Keith said like they like go by the bible like they just take care of everything they're the provider so you being spoiled is perfect for them because they want to give 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 to you anyway you know I know but but, but <clears throat> oh my god sorry regardless regardless of like the men they end up with like like just based off of that you would call that a a daddy issue because i'll put myself on blast i was spoiled we know (laughs) we know and we still care Spoiled, and like to this day i may not throw i may not throw a fit or i won't throw a fit about it but i do not like hearing the word no I do not like it I might not say nothing about it like <laughs> you know I might be like really okay but I it literally does something to me it's like, like period like, like hearing the like word no issue. period or, or is it something like hearing the word no period or is it like something that's like something simple like you'd be like oh, I, I want Chinese today no we're gonna eat Mexican no I want Chinese like so is it something simple like that? No, that's what I'm saying. I might not react to it all the time. Like I might be like, you know, oh, I want Chinese today. And then the person next to me, like, I don't want Chinese. I want this. And I'd be like, okay, whatever. But to say that it didn't bother me just a little bit, like in the back of my head, I'd be lying. <laughs> so I might not act on it all the time, but I do not like the word no to me. And that's that's okay. fine. I think if, if with, what, with what you're saying, if you have things, you know, your pet peeve is hearing no then that's fine but you need that's to make not a pet peeve that was just gonna say i don't think it's a pet peeve I that's really not a pet peeve I was spoiled. what is that what's the vocabulary being spoiled. Being spoiled. okay well you you being spoiled <laughs> either like because you're grown now you're of age so either you're gonna have to be with a person that can take care of those things or you just gonna have to be self-sufficient the way if a person do say no of course you're gonna feel some type of way about it but you're gonna be like oh okay I'll go get my own Chinese. You know, like right. Well, we all know how I feel about stuff like that. Right, um, right. I'm not gonna ask for nothing I can't 
provide provide for myself but my thing is that like I'm just saying like I might not make a big deal out of it I'm not gonna make a big deal out of hearing it but I'm just saying I don't like it like you know how, you know what I mean like, yeah, yeah. Like, and uh, I think I think you need to um is that something you discuss like when you first start talking to guys you be like I'm just letting you know <laughs> no it's not no it's not in the vocabulary no I don't I don't I don't tell them that because I mean I want to know you're honest answer you know what I mean I don't want you to just tell me yes because you know I don't like hearing no oh, so okay. but I would just say I'm just saying like I do not like the word no I don't like it okay, not okay. Okay. Talk, I'm like, right now, that's that's a topic for 2021 spoiled but again that's that's just me like I recognize that's me being spoiled and that's like, great that's, that's great that you so, as an adult can figure that out <laughs> versus it going into a relationship and then you're like what are you talking about what lies lie no, but that is the reason why i'm always like but why though <laughs> <laughs> like a child like a child that when you tell them no well mommy why can't i get this i'll let it go like some people when i'll be like but why and they're like because i said no i'm like okay but there's a reason you said no so why <laughs> We can't do that. Yeah, that can be an issue, but then again, it can't. Like, that can but, be a yes and a no. And this is coming from one spoiled child to another. And well, so you had, well, you had your I've daddy to spoil spoiled. you, but my mom did my spoiling. And my mom and my dad spoiled me. Like, I was spoiled. Yeah, you, had, you had a double take. I only had one side. But it can be an issue, but it can't be an issue. But I guarantee you that as you get older, because you're the baby out the group right now, as you get older, it's gonna change for you. It is, but right now you're just like, I want what I want. What I want. I don't care. Yeah, I want what I but want. But I feel like my my redeeming quality about that is that I can recognize that I might not get what I want, and I'll deal with it. It's just in the back of my mind, I'm just like, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that's that's the first step. You're you're actually at the first step. You can acknowledge right. it. But I still want to know why. Like why why don't you want Chinese? <laughs> maybe their taste buds want something else maybe. or it's either that it's either you'll start dealing with it or you'll start learning how to say well if you want mexican but i want chinese how about we just go get both like you'll start learning how to see how to get a yes regardless if it's not just a strictly yes for you but you're gonna get a yes well see that's where my laziness laziness kicks in because i'm not gonna want to make two stops so if I want to just, Uber if I just, want to now you can, or just order in Grubhub, Grubhub, DoorDash. DoorDash. You do DoorDash and you put in two stops. That's a longer wait time. If I'm hungry now, <laughs> what they want to do that's one with Grubhub, now. I'm one hungry now. Day. I'm hungry now. Chinese it is. So and if I'm hungry like, now and I'm like, I want Chinese. Well, I don't want that. We had that last night. I want Mexican. Fine, let's get stupid Mexican. <laughs> oh my God. All right, well, clear, clearly that's a topic, spoil kids. That's going to be a great topic going in in 2021. All right, let's go to um the third topic, which is... um <sighs> I'm going to call Courtney out on this. I feel like this is kind of Courtney's. <laughs> I know you're going to say, but why? <laughs> okay, so the third topic is, have you ever had to manage your black? I think Courtney's the opposite of this kind of sort of like I think um I think this question is more directed towards me because I'm more black black <laughs> you know black on black on black you know I was gonna uh, say I've been called the white girl all my life that's what so I'm like, saying yours is more the opposite like you've had to probably prove more like no I'm black no no seriously you guys I'm black you know because of your accent you know um but I Yes, you do. Uh, well, okay, okay. Me saying you have an accent, you've heard more of you talk like a white girl. You've heard that. So that's why I would say, because I remember me and you had those conversations where you said, and I was like, what is that? What is a sounding like talking like a white girl? What does that sound like? You know, um, but I get that as well, um, which I just take a compliment to that. Like, I'm like, you know? <laughs> no, no, like, seriously, like, what kind of white girl like that? Hey, like, you know, like I like that when they when they tell me stuff like that because I know where I came from, you know. But um, but yeah. So the third question, third topic is: Have you ever had to manage your blackness? For example, um, like at a job interview, you know, like have you had to 
flip on the switch to cut on the Caucasian or professional voice. Like, like right now I'm just talking. I'm like, yeah, um, oh my God, girl, you're so crazy. But for job interviews, I'm like, hi, my name is Ashley and I like long walks on the park, <laughs> at the park, or I like going to the beach and, you know, just like go to the farmer's market on Saturdays, organic fruits only, you know, like that. That's like managing your blackness versus me saying, oh my God, I like salt and pepper, potato chips. I like pickled eggs, pickled pig feet, you know, pork skins, you know, like that. So have you had to manage your blackness, be it in the workplace, be it like going to like conferences or going to like group settings, you know, because working in the corporate world, you know, you kind of, you got a diverse co-workers you know so have you guys experienced that <sighs> managing your black i prefer courtney to go first because this is interesting to me to want to know how <laughs> has has she ever had to do it being that she uh she is proper all the time <laughs> i know right <laughs> now courtney you, you can tell your experience of managing your blackness be it like you had to like up it up, like put some, you know, some oomph in your blackness to show, like, no, I'm really black, like you guys are. Right. Cause that's the yeah, vibe. You yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, like you said, my experience is more so the opposite. Um, I mean, but that's because I didn't go to a predominantly black school until I went to Marion High in 10th grade. And so what age is that? Like 15, 16? That's 15. Okay. So, I mean, give me a So, break. you guys got to understand. 15 years of her life, she has been raised as a saltine cracker. It's not a saltine cracker. I live in a black... See, this is this is my whole issue my whole life. I hate that. I'm just playing. I'm just... It hits home for me. It hits home because I have been in situations where it felt like I had to prove my blackness or act a different way. Right, right. Like, oh, I'm black. And this is with black people. So that makes it even more depressing than what it is. Like, I swear, even my own family, you're such a white girl. That's such a white thing to do. What's it called? When I came to your house this past time I was there and I was like, do you recycle? You was like, that's like. <laughs> what did I say? Was it you? It might've been Charlena. Somebody, it was one of y'all. Where no, I, was I said like, I was going to start recycling because I was doing more water bottles and stuff. So do you remember probably- calling me that's that white California stuff? No, that was Charlene because I didn't know. That was that. probably Charlene, but I was like, do you recycle? Because I was trying to figure out where to put my plastic bottle. <laughs> but, <laughs> but somebody was like, that's that white California stuff. I might be said that because that's not like some shit that I would say because I know they be charging like, you get like 10 cents or 5 cents per per um plastic thing or whatever, but I don't know. They do. And you got to pay for plastic bags over here. But You do. You do. Because we went to the grocery store when I was down there with Avon doing the, the show, filming for the show. Yeah, we went to Walmart and we like, but I was kind of other other moms was like, I was like, oh, I'm used to this because I go to Aldi's. You know, that you have to Ooh, pay for it. Okay. Yeah, I love Aldi's. Like, I love them. But yeah, my experience is most of the opposite. I, I feel like I've been in more experiences trying to prove that I'm black than uh, having to control how I talk. Um, when I control how I talk and like, prof- like say we're talking about professional environments, it's more so like, you need to stop cussing. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's, that's how I control my talk. But as far as like, like talking right now or stuff like that, it's more so I've had to like prove that I'm like, I, there, there've been so many instances and even in white spaces, if you want to call it mm-hmm. white spaces and black spaces where I had to, I felt like I had to overdo things or um act a certain way to be like I'm a black girl like I'm black and it's just I swear that's one of the most frustrating things that I remember growing up I hated that because I remember there was a good period of my life between I want to say about seventh to ninth grade where I was struggling I, I was really struggling about like who was Courtney's identity Ooh, and that that just because did my you, did you talk to your mom about that or you kept that that's like something you kept inside no but my cousin like my cousin KK and stuff I remember I remember distinctly I don't remember the the situation that happened but she was like they call you a white girl she was like she what she said she was like um keep talking white because that just means you ed- educated or something like that something along the lines of that and I remember like um, 
Yeah, Karen KK. I remember she has said that, um, but I don't remember what, I don't know if we were talking about it. I don't know how it happened. I was still in like high school, I think. Cause you know, of course, especially when I started school down here, you know, everybody was saying. Oh, oh yeah, they, yeah. So, but yeah, I, that was like, that was like a big struggle for me is like, that was horrible. Like I would feel, I'd hear myself like getting real loud for no reason, you know, <laughs> <laughs> trying to like be that stereotypical black girl, especially in white spaces or should I say even Hispanic spaces? Cause I was in Del Rio, Texas between that time. So I was mostly around Hispanics, okay. but they still, you know, was calling me Oreo and shit. So I said, Hispanic, a goddamn taco was calling you an Oreo. How dare they? Mm-hmm. yeah the audacity of those wow. but yeah that's that's my experience i've never had to besides like over besides like trying to prove my blackness i don't think i've ever had to like Turn change the way that i talk of course you have like a professional voice like i'm not talking right. how i talk to on the phone at work at the clinic like i'm talking to y'all right but yeah i've never had to manage my blackness unless i was trying to prove it I, I knew it was going to be the opposite for you. I, I knew that. So what about you, Keista? Like, have you had to, have you been in spaces where you had to be like, ooh, this is too black. Let me, you know, tone it down some. Well, um. Or you had to prove that you was black, like Courtney. Be, before I respond to that, Cordelia says to her, she says, to me, that doesn't sound like managing your blackness, just professional versus unprofessional. I guess because you was like, you was talking about the, the job interview type thing um as an example but um kind of, well believe it or not for a long time or a lot they would say Kisa so you just don't speak improper at all do you they was like you don't say ain't gonna and all <laughs> that stuff and I was so I, I guess you wouldn't even really call that managing blackness I guess you would call that managing country or accent <laughs> <laughs> because a lot of people uh would say well you can't be from the south or something like that and I'm like well I am and so I would have to find myself sometimes like depending on where I was I would find myself either being the black the country or somehow something now uh the party in days uh drinking and trying to well was trying to smoke but that wasn't for me but (laughs) trying it out and stuff like that then I know for sure I had to manage the stereotypical blackness because it was just like what like what 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 you gonna do like it it will (laughs) it will go it will go that manner versus what it is now so okay yeah, but more what more of what I get now is not managing blackness, it's managing my accent or the countryness. Okay. All right. Well, um uh as far as me managing my blackness, it's usually uh of course like what Cordelia you say about uh I guess you can kind of mask it under the professional and unprofessional because I know I do go I, over phone, phone interviews. I, I notice that, oh, I change a little bit. You know, when I'm going into in-person interviews, I use words that I would never use around my Black family or, you know, like I start using those words that I paid for with that college education, you know, or paid attention to. Um, uh even like I, I noticed that I switched up even when I depending on the type of man that I'm talking to like if he's just like a a regular regular guy you know I just talk regular but if he's like you know master's degree or something like that and I'm more I'm used I'm like oh really so how, how do you you know I, I noticed my tone you know and then I'm like why do I do that like it's like a a switch I'm like but you know um so I think mm, unintentionally I do it when I'm on the phone with regular people but when I'm in a professional setting I automatically I know to cut it on you know um but once I get in there like a job or something wherever I'm at then you know your personality just slowly start you know 
but I have been a touch of Courtney. I have been called um, not an Oreo, maybe a s'mores, but not an Oreo. Um, I, but I have been told that I sounded like a white girl at times. Um, even my family, my family has called me that. My cousins sometimes have called me that. Um, and then even down with like certain stuff that I cook now, they'd be like, oh, you go, here you go with that white girl shit. I'm like, why? Because I did a fucking stir fry with zucchini and squash and carrots. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? It's healthy. I don't like, it's just, you know. And then talking about, you know, you know, we like potato salad, you know, we like macaroni and cheese, you know, but, um, but yeah, so I think we all kind of experienced a little bit of like managing the blackness, either we had to turn it up, Courtney's experience in the black spaces, or we kind of had to like control it in a professional environment or whatever. All right, so Latia says you have learned to code switch. Right, right. What other um, comments and questions we got? Um, I think that was it. I wanted to say something else. Okay. Um, with uh, me and my sister Cordelia, mm -hmm. if y'all watching the comments, since we grew up in different places, I feel like we also we would adapt. Um, in different spaces, and we would start picking up accents. Like whenever uh. we would come here, or not come here, but go to Marion like for the summers and stuff, and then go back home, my mom would talk about how country we sound. And granted, my mom's from up north. Oh, she's from Jersey. And she, her accent is kind of gone a little bit, but let, let her be on the phone with somebody from home. Or even just certain words. <laughs> she's still got that northern accent. Mm -hmm. So, But I think me and Cody did a lot of adapting. Like the way people would talk in like Hawaii and stuff, we would pick up that. Like we, okay. we did a lot of picking up okay yeah okay that, so maybe that's why some people think i have an accent sometimes okay yeah i i just prefer to use say the word accent versus just saying you sound like a white girl because i know that offends you and i i've felt that as well like i've i've you know experienced that a little bit and then also what it sounding like a white girl is but let's move on to the fourth question the last question which is um social media etiquette um, and what social media social media etiquette is is basically um your from your personal experience like what is it personally that you would post that you wouldn't post oh hold up and um hold up are there what did I say That's, did I say social media are there rules for your relationship oh well I don't want to do um rules for your relationship but um Social media etiquette, like just for your, yourself. So I'm going to take out the rules for your relationship. I, I see why Keith did not use like you touched on that. But I just want to say social media etiquette as far as like you personally. Like uh, for me, for example, um, posting certain pictures, like I don't, like I did something that was out of the ordinary. Like when I had got flued out um, a couple months ago, like people that normally follow my page, it was like a big deal. They was like, oh, you've never posted nothing like that before. What is going on with you? It was like the, the swimsuit shit or whatever. Like, oh, I, I was just going to say that. Yeah, yeah. Like, so like that was out of the ordinary for me because I on my social media that I, I would have never done that. But I honestly don't know what happened. I had an out-of-body experience. You know, I was feeling myself. <laughs> you know, like I was on some Instagram thought shit, you know. Um, I don't and I call Instagram thought stuff, but I know what I know what I saw. I was like, well, right. not, not, okay, well, what I'm saying is That's not, I was too. not thought like those hoes over there because that was just only one guy, but it was just more like, because I was just trying to, I remember the videos and stuff that I was posting. I was just trying to encourage women to like, you know, take those trips and, and on somebody else's dime, like if they offer, because a lot of times we'd be like, no, I'm good. Oh, you, you know the, hey, how you doing in your inboxes and stuff? You know, you like, we just, you just shoot them. You're like, nope, 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 nope. I, I'm good. Nope. He ain't my type. Nope, nope. But then sometimes when you talk to somebody, they just, they honestly be like, I just want to take you out. I just want to spend some time with you. I don't, because I'm thinking like, nope, you ain't, you ain't getting none. So don't even ask, you know. But sometimes I just want to, you know. But um, so posting pictures, like your angles, like angles, uh, certain sharing memes, like, like etiquette, you know, like what is it that you would do on your page that 
I guess that other people wouldn't do or or do you have rules like you're not going to do certain things? Like I can like I can point out like certain stuff that y- you guys do. Like that would be that y'all regularly do, but you wouldn't go above that. Like Courtney. Okay, yeah. Okay, you volunteered. Okay, great. <laughs> so, okay, so we all all three of us are different, right? So I post what I personally think. I don't use memes. I just say what the fuck I want to say. Yeah. You know, and have and that and use a hashtag. Like, I think Keisha, you share more memes than Courtney do. I barely share memes. I'll share like a funny video or something like that. Um, Courtney posts more pictures. Well, I think I got Courtney beat now because I started posting more pictures more like this during COVID, like 2020. But Courtney used to just post pictures of herself and she might share something funny. She might, might, and it was a big might, might share something funny. Other than that, Courtney is just, okay. Like she's super lucky. Like, so you're like, your, your social media etiquette will be like real strict. Like it really takes something for you to like, type something you know like you don't why don't you post you know why don't, you, why don't you post why don't I post I think because like there was a period between like after I graduated high school <clears throat> I maybe maybe about from the time I graduated high school or maybe I should say the last year of high school to about two three years after mm-hmm. well I would post a lot of my business right <laughs> Right. and I mm, a lot of my business and so I think after I had I wasn't on social media for a little while um mm-hmm. in between that time and then when I got back on it before I started like really posting I was looking at stuff and I was looking at what other people were posting and I think I was like in people's business because like like I say all the time if you put it out there you give people room to judge it. It does not matter what it is. It does not matter what picture, nothing. If you put it out there, you're giving people an opportunity to judge it and have an opinion about it. And so when people are posting all their business and I find myself on, you know, this person's page, their boyfriend's page, their boyfriend's sister's page, trying to figure out what the argument's going on, I kind of have a, a, an epiphany. And like, I'm like, I don't want people in my business. <laughs> whatsoever like I don't need you to know my every move I really okay. don't um the only thing you need to know is that I'm cute you know okay but okay I, <laughs> I understand your logic behind that however it's your page like you control the narrative you're the author of your story your Facebook is your book you're the author so I get what you're saying about the examples of people posting and you got the, the drama the baby mama drama the fighting and all this other stuff but you can still post because Facebook's like, what are your thoughts today? You can still post like, it's a lovely day. Um, oh my God, the sun is out. Like, you can still post that. Just but don't. See, that's the thing. Like, stuff like that. Like, I know you're not talking about literally like, it's a lovely right, right, day. Right, right, right. But some stuff that I think or something like that, I'm like, there's no point in posting it. <laughs> like, I, I'll really, I really do think, I'm like, there's no point in posting that. Like, I'm not like one of the, I'm not a Facebook comedian. I'm not that funny, I don't think. Um, so it's like I don't really have nothing funny to say. I might But you don't know that to, though. You don't huh? know that until the likes and the comments come. You don't well, that's how I feel about it. And I don't okay. really care to know if that if if okay. I'm being honest, I don't really care to know. And then like I said, no matter what I post about, whatever you put out there online, you're giving people an opportunity to have an opinion about it, which I don't care for. <laughs> Okay. I don't care for it. And I mean, and that's even like accomplishments. Like I graduated, you know, school. I got my diploma of being an MA and all that stuff like that. I didn't sit there and post about it, you know, all day and stuff like that. I, I, it just doesn't matter to me if you know or not. I'm at, I'm at that phase. The, uh, the, uh, cause how I know I gotten there because I've been seeing people post like houses and, and like apartment keys and stuff. And I'm like, but it's their speech. Like I'm happy for them. I, I'm most definitely happy for them because I've went through those those phases in my life as well and was happy, super happy about it. But where I say maybe you shouldn't have posted that. Like keep that to yourself. Is because the speech up under the key. 
are above the key, which is I had to get out of Marion County. People hating on me. Uh, what you know, like that. So I'm like, you don't think that they praying on your downfall? Like, like you should just be like, shouldn't even say anything. You know, just get up, get the fuck up out of here, get your apartment, get your house, leave the state or leave the city, and then people just be like, well, damn, where Ashley went? Until you see me. Oh, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Like, cause I'm traveling with my with my business or what you know, my business or whatever. But yeah, um, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. But and, just, and that's another thing. Like some of the stuff, like, like you know how some people, and it's not always like a speech about like I got all these haters look at me now. You right, know, you don't always right. have that. Some people have really inspirational stuff to say. They do. I don't have any inspirational stuff. Oh my god, Courtney. <laughs> I really don't. Like <laughs> I was having a conversation, and this might just be me being me but I was having a conversation with somebody and I was like I feel like I haven't really accomplished anything this year and they're like well you you finished school you did your externship you know you got hired on at your externship site like that's a lot you did you actually did a lot I'm like well I don't feel that way I don't have nothing inspirational to say I'm just not an inspirational type of speaker so I don't have those big old paragraphs to say well I'm I'm gonna say this in defense of what you just said because I've known you for several years or whatnot um, I'm very proud of you or whatnot for that. But I think the reason why, and you can tell me if I'm wrong or not, but I don't think I'm wrong. Um, I think the reason maybe why you didn't, you don't feel like a big deal about it um, is because remember you was like, you wanted to do do more. You want to do more with your life, you know? So I feel like because you have accomplished that and that is a big accomplishment, I feel like you're still in that phase of doing more. So that's why it's not a big deal to you. You just, it's like just something you checked off your list. But that is a big deal because look at where you was, look where you at this year compared to last year, the year before that, the year before that, the year before that. Because when you told me you was moving, I was like, I just got here. Like, I thought what happened to the wine? And the, you know, I was like, but I couldn't be selfish like I couldn't be like not like my opinion was going to make you stay or anything you know but I'm just like damn like she's really leaving you know (laughs) but I'm happy I'm proud proud of you but I I think that might be what it is because you haven't and then you switched up what you was going to do because remember you was going for what what's the e-word aesthetics or something um Jeez, I forgot the word. Esthetician. That's what that, I wanted to do. That, yeah. And then you switched it up. And I and I told you, I was like, well, actually the career that you, you're moving into, the field, that's better uh, because you're going to always need that. You know, yeah. you're going to always need that. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's just my professional opinion that maybe But you know what I think good. it also is? Like a lot of people be posting stuff and making a big deal out of things that isn't warranted not warranted but stuff that you're already supposed to be doing and maybe I put that pressure on myself like when when people post and not saying that people should stop posting it because it's still a beautiful thing yeah yeah like, oh I went to the stuff. store and bought my kid this that and the third and da, 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 da. mama always gonna make the way and in my mind I'm like that's beautiful that's a nice thing but I'm like ain't that what you're supposed to do I get what you're saying but let me let me say this because I've been there on that other end of posting or feeling that way rather not necessarily posting that but feeling that way I think it's the struggle the struggle da the struggle um of where using the, the example of the mom nine times out of ten no fuck it ten out of ten they're a single mom they're a single mom they've been trying to get that fuck nigga to, to do what he was supposed to do like I saw some girl one of my Facebook friends I saw where she was like um uh damn like he ain't do nothing all year he couldn't buy his kid a, a, a christmas presents and i'm like baby baby girl he ain't do nothing all year what makes you think he's gonna do something this one day but i get it i get why she felt that way because if i've been taking care of everything else you can't take care of christmas no and i'm not I agree with that. I would have felt some way too. Like it, at yeah. least you could do it on a special day. Like, no, but, I get that completely. I'm just talking about posting it. <laughs> well, and that's the thing. Me, me being her, I would have been like, I don't need everyone to know my business about my baby daddy not being shit. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't need yeah, everyone. I don't need doing. everyone we're to want to be in here inviting people to have an opinion about it. You know what I mean? The, you know what? I'm going to say this. Facebook is a support group. Facebook is therapy. 
I'm, I'm just gonna say that and I and I and I, I think some people are gonna say what are you talking about Ashley but then hear me out Facebook is therapy for a lot of people because of using that same status of what I just said about the girl about you know he ain't do nothing all year he can't do this you know how many women single like girl tell me about it girl let me tell you. birthday uh all he bought my baby was an Easter basket and he had the kind of the little peeps in it like it was it's like a uh it's like a support group. Facebook is a support group. And then people started off with their status. And then you get so much like comfort into like, she's not alone. She's not alone. And then young girls her age would, or young ladies rather, they'll post under the bottom. But women like myself, older women will go in her inbox and we'll say, well, baby, what you need? Or how can I help? Or what's your cash app? You know, or uh, you know what size she wear. You know, so honestly, Facebook is a support group. Believe it or not, I know it's a lot of fuckery, and I said on the last episode that it's kind of like the club. They let everybody in. They ain't patting nobody at all. You know, they let everybody in with whatever you got. You know, but um, low key I mean, is a support. I, I, I get that, but for me personally, I'm just like my support okay. group is the people who. Yeah, I just, I just, I just don't see the need to post everything. That's just me. Okay. And what about you, Keisha? What about um, your social media etiquette? Um, like, do you like there's certain pictures that you don't post, or certain places that you check in? Um, uh, pictures. Um, you know, what about you? Like, what's things that you probably wouldn't do? Do you do statuses? Because I don't, I don't really see you do statuses. I just see you like sharing stuff. You, oh, you, oh, you, you do be going live doing your own, um, your inspirational stuff for men. <laughs> <laughs> first of all, that first one was to defend our <laughs> men that are good. When we get, when we get our posts, when us women get our posts. Second of all, that's coming. But I, I do these th- I do these videos when they, when they hit. Because You're right. That, that right. second video was for both. Okay. That second video was for women and for men. Okay. But you know, women are always getting taken taken up for anyway, automatically. Women, okay. yeah, there, there, there are women. It's it's women out there that like you know that that woman. That's the woman. She ain't do that. Like women get taken care of, um, uh, taken up for automatically um and everything like that so you know i was like it just hit me it's like uh you know boom keeps like defend these these guys out here but um so i do post okay uh i just don't post like that i don't post every move i will post uh like you said the inspirational encouraging videos i do okay. encouraging lives um i will probably depending on what i what happened i will share some share a post that i probably posted a while ago or share a post somebody tagged me in before or something like that i actually have when people tag me and stuff i have to go look and approve it or not because right I right yeah i do that on my page um it doesn't really matter like being saved or not i still just don't want anything on my page right and um i i usually when i post pictures um it's probably me one one, i probably took pictures because i just wanted to and i was probably like feeling myself i thought i was extra cute having a courtney moment and (laughs) then um (laughs) courtney moments what don't and call it a Courtney moment. 20, 2021, writing it down. And then um it's probably uh something motivational behind it or right. um what what they call it. Um uh I'm not sure of the right right word, but the last post that I put when I had on that all black and that blue top, and I'm like, yes, I've done this, yes, I've been here, yes, you know, this and that and the other, but um, so basically it's still just inspirational to somebody because believe it or not, there's somebody that done been through all what we all done been through. Right. That's why so, I say like Facebook is kind of like low key a support group. Yeah. But the only thing about that is Facebook is a support group, but Facebook is a bullying site. 
Facebook is fake preachers, some fake preachers, some <laughs> fake prophets, some fake people. Some people just posting up there this stuff and ain't even got half of what they put up there going on. Um, Facebook, like Facebook is a whole bunch of stuff. It's a positive and a negative all at the same time. Right. But it goes back to depending on what you post because you got, you got, this is, it aggravates me so bad. This is why I be careful of the pictures I post and stuff. It aggravates me so bad for a female to post a half naked picture. And then as soon as a dude get in their inbox or as soon as a dude um, say something or call them out the way, now they're posting again. I put that picture up there, this, 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 this. Okay, well, if you put that picture up there, like like what you do with your bathing suits and stuff, you specifically had a description for what was going on with that picture. You did not specifically put that up there to expose yourself or exploit yourself. So my thing is, like Courtney said before, it gives people a room to judge and to this and that and the other. So a lot of nine times out of the 10, people treat you how you present yourself. That's true. So that's like that's just something I cannot stand. So like when I when I post pictures or anything like that, I try to it's showing probably fun because when we go to the beach every year, I, like we're in our bathing suits and hats and stuff like that. But we're having fun. Like, you know, it's, it's a family gathering, you know, the families and friends were all together and stuff like that. But you can see that's what it is. You right. you can know that you're not what you're it not is. cropping out everybody that was there and just and, and doing a side angle with your your, your thong in your ass and then get <laughs> I get what you're saying. Like you're making sure that no, this is a family fun event and I just so haven't had a thong in my ass, but you know, I get what you're saying. Right. Yeah, um, you could like you could tell the difference in all that stuff. Courtney. What Courtney? What Courtney? <laughs> <laughs> I just I just I okay. So like I don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. People, like you said, people do judge people based off perception, right? I do agree with that. However, that doesn't mean I have to accept that. Um I think that because the pictures I take, especially on my stories, and I be going to the side and poking my little butt out, I'm showing off my butt, right? But that but doesn't mean send me naked. a dick pic, huh? But you're not half naked. But if See, I want to be, that still doesn't mean that well, just because I can expect you to send me a weird message doesn't mean I can't have a problem with it. Yeah, you can, but see what I'm saying? See, that's what I'm saying. That's just like when, well, I'm not sure about you, but with it, as far as like growing up um grand uncle well I didn't have my granddaddy like that but my uncle and all that stuff like that they would always tell me they would always say how you present but each person is still going to have their own perception of you and I really didn't know what that was until I went to a club one night because see I could I would see females who I go to school with they'll be dressed nice for school and then we get to the club, you can see all booty cheeks, you can see all the chest but the nipples, you can see the belly button, the whole belly, you can see all that stuff, and then they're walking in and they change and they doing this and they got their drink in their hand and it's like yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and they attitude and all of them really would change and they actually, I would absolutely see them give off like a, a sexual thing like yeah I want it yeah this and this and then as soon as the dude would approach them how they're presenting their self to them get out for me and and then no matter because it doesn't that, matter that, that, that's, that's a whole that's a whole that doesn't mean you can touch me that's a whole topic that that, that understand, that's, that's understand that's our women's it, right and well I can't do that no that's I'm not thing. you can have whatever perception of me that you think if I walk outside naked you might think that I'm crazy you might think that I'm a hoe but that does not mean touch me. Correct, but it also means you're supposed to take care of yourself in a manner that you don't you that you can. Get, I can take care of myself yourself. in whatever manner I choose to please. That doesn't mean touch me. Well, this That's is true, the thing. It's this is the you, thing. This and is I, the thing. And I don't have to sit here and be like, oh well, I came outside naked, so I guess that's what I asked for. No, I didn't ask for that. I came outside naked because I wanted to be naked. So this is the thing, Courtney and Keister. We understand that. Courtney can post whatever picture she wants. 
poking her ass out from the side and no she don't have the booty cheeks on she just got on regular jeans yeah, you know but courtney can't get upset when these men that ain't shit go in her inbox and say hey what's up with you like that pic today it's, a, it's expected no don't get me wrong that's what i'm saying you're Perception. doing it for a I, I expect it but Correct. for me to sit here that doesn't mean I, I can't say well if um if I do a picture like that and someone sends me a dick pic, that doesn't mean I can't get upset about it because I decided oh, to poke my butt. Oh, I forgot about that. That's, yeah, these unsolicited, unwanted <laughs> dick pics. 2021. <laughs> unwanted. Now, I'm not saying nobody should, like, nobody should be saying that it's their right to do it or they have a right to do it. All I'm just saying is don't get upset with the people that are taking our or perceiving every, receiving everything about you the other way that you're not trying to be when you say you expect the message so my thing is these females that i guess don't expect the message but they're putting it out there you're gonna have guys that's gonna be like hey this but then you're gonna have other people that's gonna be like um you know well you're nice you're beautiful like it's all in people's perception. I, 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 like, I and say, I agree with bullshit, that. Though, but that's bullshit. That like at this point in life, there's no woman that can say that can feel like posting a picture, unsolicited picture, or a provocative picture, and think that ain't shit gonna happen. Like you're gonna get guys that may come to you and approach you with the the how was your day, sweetheart? You know, and then you got some guys that's gonna be like, shit, I sure wouldn't mind sucking on that, you know. But it's at the end of the day, it's Courtney's decision or whomever woman's decision to choose which inbox she will reply to. And I'm hoping she go for go with the how was your day, sweetheart? Not the, you know, other shit, but um, but yeah, um, okay, so let's wrap this up. Um, I'm the opposite of well, not opposite, but I pretty much do it all. Um, except for like provocative stuff, but I'm getting there a little bit. I, I touched on it during quarantine. I did. I ain't never did. The stuff that I did during 2020, I ain't never done that before. I was living my life. Getting there? Getting there. You working on it? I am. Because I want to do a, I want to do a big girl boutique. I want to see a titty. <laughs> You're trying to get me shut down. I be damn. I'm not getting this. Oh, yeah. I'll do a titty with a pasty on it with a pop tart on it or a toaster strudel, you know. Toaster no. strudel. Our toaster strudel. Strawberry and cream. One. We're, 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 we're high class over here. We don't do Pop Tarts. <laughs> them, dry, <laughs> them dry ass. Not the dry with, Pop Tarts. Right. So, okay. So, I do a little bit of, of all. I most definitely post what's on my mind. Um, I'm sim. I don't want to say a, a, a social media comedian. It's just that I be thinking of certain stuff and I post it and, and it's funny to me and some people like it. You know what? I don't like people that be in my inbox and be like girl you're so crazy well like my shit but luckily i don't care about that because it's for me anyway i don't do it for the lot see look at it unsolicited tongue picture don't want it but anyway a tongue uh, picture. girl uh emoji with a tongue in in water we, we're gonna talk about tongue. but um so i post a little bit of everything. I post what's on my mind. I share certain stuff that I think is funny. Um, I post like, um, I, I don't get into politics. I, that's one thing I really don't do. I, I really don't get into that. Unless it's something that like, I, it's a movie like these slavery movies or something. And it just riles me up. And I'd be like, see, this is what, da, 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 you know. But um, but overall, I pretty much do everything. But I, I don't share a lot of memes. I just say what I say, which me and one of my cousins, um, we get into that because my dad's side of the family is like, oh, actually, she just be posting any and everything. Y'all share any and everything. Like, the difference is I actually say it and y'all be pussy and y'all just share it. And I hate that. I hate getting into that, that back and forth. I'm like, just fucking say it. Stop sharing it. Stop being pussy and sharing it and then putting a 100 in a check. You still ain't saying it. You just say I agree. The difference between you and me is I will type it and enter with my own words. I stand behind it a hundred percent. I don't have to put an emoji and a check mark or whatever. But yeah, that's that. So though this is the social media etiquette. Okay, so I want to close out with this is the very last episode for 2020. 
Um, it's been a crazy year, um, but some blessings and some good things have come from it. Um, uh, hence we started this, uh, finally, um, Coming into 2021, it's going to come in with a brand new name, a whole new kind of like format. I'm working on that. A lot of the behind the scenes stuff. Um, I would like to go live on not only just Facebook, but also on uh, Instagram and YouTube if possible. Um, we're going to be starting a whole new page for it where uh, at first you're going to be watching it on our personal pages, but you're also, it's going to be a whole page dedicated to that. Um, whatever the name of the show is going to be, I'll announce it. Um, once I come up with it, <laughs> and then I'll also we'll get no input. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, you can, you know, but I, you can, you know. <laughs> what you mean we can? Keith, Keith might have a good idea. You just, you just gonna leave her out. You just you gonna let her put a put a two cents in. I mean, I guess. I don't know. I'm still I, to see. It wasn't even supposed to be called this right here. I was just that I was just using this hashtag because I got upset with a guy, you know, one of my exes, and he thought that you know he was gonna come back and be like, and I'm like, boy, I'm good without you. I'm sing. I'm successfully single. My business is still here, and I'm single. I don't fuck with you no more. So hashtag successfully single. And then I was like, oh, coming together because you know I've been working on this for way before I even knew you, Courtney. And then, cause I got like old videos of on YouTube that's private. I'm gonna show y'all when we all like around each other. You was like, damn, you really was trying to like do this. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> like for real, you know. But um, but yes, we come back with a new name. I'm gonna have an email address where people can like write in stuff, like send like questions. Cause I, I feel like once it gets past Marion, and once I put it on like Instagram and YouTube it's going to build more, but I'm excited about it. Um, I'm looking forward to 2021. Um, hopefully get back out there, bring y'all, you guys some delicious food. Hopefully I have my food truck by the end, you know, um, I'm ready to start back traveling and, uh, I'm probably gonna take a week or two off maybe with the show. Courtney, when's your moving date? Like when are you, are you met? Okay. All right. So, uh, you know, um, we're gonna, I'm probably gonna take a couple weeks off and then get everything behind the scenes done, you know, and then, uh, we're gonna come back uh, a little bit better. We're gonna do phone stuff. So instead of you guys just automatically like typing stuff, cause like I said, it's gonna be, sometimes we're gonna be on Instagram, I mean on Facebook and then we, but I'm trying to move the platform to YouTube. So you're gonna have to like the YouTube page, okay? So it's going. It started out on Facebook, but it's going to be moved to YouTube. All right. So make sure you like and subscribe. I got the link above or above the video. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, keep watching the personal page, my personal page, and their personal page because they'll share it. But mostly mine because I put it in my stories and stuff. And um. That's pretty much it for me. What are you guys, what's your um, goals for 2021? Pizza, Courtney? Oh, what's the, your short-term goal is like, what is something that you plan on getting done and accomplished within by March or April 2021? That's something I can't share right now. Okay. I can share mine. All right. I have a few. Okay. Calm down. So, <laughs> <Calm> down. <laughs> nasty. He nasty. Like uh. <laughs> so, um, I want to lose ten pounds by March. What? Yeah. That's I didn't so gained funny. a lot. Since I first moved to California, I didn't gained a lot. I want to lose at least 10 pounds by March. That would be nice. And okay. then um, I also want to become certified um, with medical assisting. So I'm about to start working on that and getting back to the books and studying. So I want to come certified. And then also, I am going to find me a man this year. Oh, oh, oh. high five. I'm going to find me a man. Virtual high five. Oh, my God. Girl. I'm like... going to put myself out there. I'm going to. Uh, re-download Tinder, maybe. Black people meet something. 
I'm going to find me a man. I'm going to listen, listen. Somebody out there is going to want me. <laughs> you know what? Hopefully, I mean, you got people that want you, but uh, the ones that's been coming to me, I wouldn't send them to you. I know what you want. I know what you're looking for. I know what you deserve. So I wouldn't even disrespect you like that and send them your way, you know? Um, But yeah, this shit is... Let me say, I don't want to leave out with this right. Oh, oh. Listen, this dating shit is horrible. Like, honestly, I thought I was the shit, you know? <laughs> um, Like, I don't have no kids. I have a business. I, I, I ain't got no, my body count ain't crazy. Like, I, I'm college educated. Um, I thought my weight was a problem, but I realized more pushing for the cushion. They love that shit. I was um, going to say it's not. It's not, but I thought it was. Um, uh, it's just a whole lot of fuck niggas. Like it's they just lie so bad. And I'm tr- Lord knows I'm trying to stay strong for black men. I'm trying, but y'all about to make me go to the gas station. I'm telling you, and go talk to Cordier or whatever Akbar, whatever the fuck his name is. I am so like upset with what's going on in society. So I get what you're saying. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out like to put myself in spaces because. 2020 was the year that I was going to start putting myself out there because when I travel a lot with my business, I have guys that hit on me that be like, hey, what's up with you? Can I, hey, boy, when, hey, 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 when you going to come cook for me? You know, and I'd be like, I'm working right now. You know, so I was always like pushing people away, but like now I'm like, but 2020, we had COVID. Can't, can't do nothing. So now you got to, you ain't got no choice but to date over here, like through your phone, FaceTime and apps and, you know, and it's it's I'm I'm nervous because I don't want nobody to try to use me. <laughs> Cause I like to date in where don't nobody you can't you don't know who I am like you don't know this that part you know because I don't want people thinking I got money I ain't got no money I got student loan debt baby <laughs> I got no money. <laughs> Biden trying to cancel that. Oh, he and he need to give me give me. I got about 70, 80, you know, because of interest, you know, but yeah, and hopefully that helped me out a lot. My credit score will go up. I'm already like at seven, but it'll, you know, I don't, well, I ain't really got to purchase nothing like that. You know what I mean? No more. Kind of sort of, other than my food truck, but yeah. You know. But yeah, so yeah, I think we all, well, that's one goal that we can kind of like leave off on is we want a man. My name is Ashley. I'm 35 years old. Oh. <laughs> Preferably two kids, one baby mother. Um, if you're a blue, I listen, I listen, I know I have my own business. I'm an entrepreneur, but I don't feel like I'm up there like that no more. I've been knocked down. <laughs> I had a reality check, you know. Uh, I'm just kidding. Like I always knew I had a, re- but I, I'm willing to accept like a blue collar worker. Like you can work in a factory or something like that, or manufacturing. You ain't got to be an entrepreneur. But um, my hustle and my spirit, I'm gonna ask you as my man, like, what is it that you want to do? Like, what else? What else is there that you want to do? Because I want to help you. I want to invest with you, and I want us to be bosses together. If you just say I really love my job, actually, I don't want. Okay, well, let's help you get be a manager, a supervisor. Let's let's move up the chain. You know. Um, that's just the type of personality that I have. But um, you know, um, if you're interested in me, just <laughs> give me up. <laughs> me too. <laughs> well, not yet. I'm gonna still ignore you. But give me, give me like a week or two. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> I mean, well, I do have a busy week, so you know, um. But I'll get back to you, you know. But yeah. Bless your heart. Okay, so, oh, so you just gonna wait for God to see you. You better put your request out there, girl. Listen. Oh, I already told him how I need him to be. You gotta be careful what you ask for because you'll get exactly what you ask for. Well, I, that's what I kind of want. Exactly what I asked for. I just need to ask Sierra what her, her prayer was. So, um. Well, you know, they say it's not Sierra's prayer. It was what Russell had wanted. You know. Why why he more important than she? That's what they saying. They was like, she was like done, but it was him who was praying for a woman like her, you know. And so they just 
you know, I don't know, but I'm about to start. I, the world need to get back better because I'm about to start putting myself in social circles that I've been invited to so I can find my man. Like, listen. Well, all right, you guys. Appreciate you. See you 2021. Have a great year. Enjoyed you guys. This was amazing. This was fun. <sighs> Let me go inbox this guy. Like, it always the ones you don't want. Like, I don't even want him. But that's the one that, like you say, Court, that's the one that's showing me attention. So, you know, I'm depressed right now. So, let me. <laughs> no. Oh, Lord. It's Bye, you guys. Bye, y'all. I'll pay call, y'all. Okay. All right.